All right, thanks for watching. And no one, absolutely no one. Dr. Payam, let's calculate the volume of a ravioli. So today, let's find the volume of a ravioli squeezed between sine of x sine of y and minus sine of x sine of y. And on the square, 0 comma pi comma 0 comma pi. And what this means is that x is between 0 and pi and y is between 0 and pi. And before I solve this problem, let me tell you an interesting story about how I found this. Because originally, I found this on Twitter. It was kind of like a meme problem. But I was like, oh, it's very interesting. Let me figure out where it actually comes from. And then I googled, and it turns out it comes from a professor from Texas A&M who put that on a multivariable final. And <laughs> the amazing story is I will actually go to Texas A&M next year. Like, what are the chances? Anyway, as cool as this story is this integral, because it turns out to find the volume of this ravioli, we have to find a double integral. And let's see what this looks like. Well, first, let's draw a picture. I'm very bad at drawing this, so here's the actual picture. So this is the ravioli squeezed between two functions. And the point is, the upper function, it's sine of x sine of y. And the lower function, let me change color, it's minus sine of x sine of y. So it's pretty symmetric. And you see, again, x is between 0 and pi. So, you know, as some people may say between 0 and 3. And then y is between 0 and pi as well. And notice it is, in fact, 0 at the end points, And it is 1 and minus 1 at, you know, in the middle. So the question is now, how can we find a volume? So remember, the volume can be written as a double integral of the bigger function here which is sine of x sine of y, minus the smaller function, which is minus sine of x sine of y, dx dy. So as usual, just like in calculus where you have areas between curves, you do the integral of the bigger function minus the smaller function. Well, here it's with the double integral. And the question is, what are the endpoints? Well, notice x is between 0 and pi. And y is between 0 and pi. And so all we need to do is evaluate this double integral. So this becomes a double integral from 0 to pi and 0 to pi. This simplifies quite nicely. We get 2 sine of x sine of y dx dy. And sure, you could find an antiderivative, but it turns out here we can simplify our task tremendously because notice here what we have is a function of x, so f of x is sine of x, and a function of y, and we integrate over constants. And whenever this happens, it turns out you can just split up the integrals. And if you want, I can prove it at the end. So it turns out this just becomes 2, again, just 2 comes out, integral from 0 to pi sine of x dx, because x is between 0 and pi, and integral from 0 to pi of sine of y dy. So just to reiterate, if you have a function purely of x times a function purely of y, and you have constants everywhere, then it's OK to, slip, slip, to split up the integrals. And even better than that, notice here we are integrating the same function. So it turns out the answer is just 2 times this integral squared, because this is the same thing as this. So we kind of you're doing x times x, which is x squared. So 2 times integral from 0 to pi sine of x dx squared. So all we need to do is calculate this. So this becomes 2 times, so an antiderivative, I think it's minus cosine of x from 0 to pi. And again, remember to square this. And we get minus, so 2 times minus cosine of pi minus minus, which becomes plus cosine of 0 squared. Well, you see cosine of pi is minus 1, 
So minus that is 1. This is 1. And so basically, we get 2 times 1 plus 1 squared. So 2 times 2 squared, which is 2 times 4. And that's 8. So in the end, the volume of the ravioli is 8. So you see it is a nice double integral, not too hard to solve because of that trick. And now, if you want, let me prove that trick. So how come, so in other words, what's the integral from a to b and then c to d of f of x, g of y, dx dy? Now notice, g of y, that's just a constant with respect to x. So it comes out. And then what we get is integral from c to d, g of y, integral from a to b, f of x, dx dy. But then by Papa Fubini, this just becomes the integral of f of x times g of y, and you integrate that. But here's a nice thing. This integral here, that's just a constant. Let's say it's 2. I don't know. Or it was like pi or something. And in particular, it just comes out from the integral altogether. And then in the end, what you get, we get integral from a to b, f of x dx, times integral from c to d, g of y dy. And in particular, what this becomes is just a split up integral. So that's why if you have f of x, g of y, and you have constants, you can just split up the integral. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.